effect as we fill your mind with spooky true crime stories of the deranged, unhinged, and absolute pure evil murders that will blow your mind. Some places you will visit to show you around and educate you on the history. Other times we will bring you to the paranormal because the dead never lie silent for too long. It'll be the last time anybody sees us alive. I don't know where she has us, but we're gonna get something killed. Hello? Gina, there is a beehive over there. Do you see that in the hole? Buckle up, Buttercup. Welcome to 50 States of Madness. Welcome to 50 States of Madness. Hi, welcome. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. Lovely Friday. Evening. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, so today we um we usually don't post videos on Fridays. We usually do one a week, but um, our video two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, a week ago, uh, really has blown up. (laughs) We're at 15,000 views right now. And that's a blow up for us. I mean, for us, that's a blow up. I know some people get millions of views, but for us, that's a lot. And we've been fielding a lot of questions from people and a lot of comments. And our video was about Nicole Kessinger. Yeah. And exposing the truth on her. Yeah. So first of all, I want to uh, shout out Zawoki. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. So he um, is the person that I believe we have to thank for all of our new followers. So our subscribers. So welcome to all of our new subscribers. Yes, welcome. We got. Thank you so much. We literally probably got about five over five over 500 followers or subscribers just from him so thank you so much for um he did like a reaction video to our last episode on nicole kessinger and we are gonna meet with him soon and hopefully do a collab on this case too but we try as hard as we can to and not just on this video on all of our videos we always try to um, keep up on the comments and we'd love to hear from everybody what they have to say and regardless if we agree with you or not we just like to hear what every everybody's takes especially like on a case like this every bit is opinion we just like the comments to remain respectful yeah. so as long as they're respectful but you have a strong opinion for us against us if you absolutely disagree with us perfect like write it in there let us know yeah it's definitely okay but just we like to keep it respectful yeah and positive because i mean there's like times where shannon and i don't agree we don't have the same you know i'll have one thing in my mind and then she'll say oh i thought about it this way and it's something i never even thought of and so we don't always not everybody's gonna always disagree or not always gonna agree but um yeah like shannon said our our goal here you know, first of all, and I put this in a lot of comments that I answered, uh, Shannon and I are not detectives. We are not investigators. We're not even armchair <laughs> detectives. We like to just, let's say, get the information out there that we find, yes. that we find interesting. And it may not be accurate. Like a lot of, we don't claim that we're hundred percent accurate. We don't claim that we're, we get it from other sources. And if yes. it's interesting and we think it'll make you think Mm-hmm. And it's something that like, wait a second. And it puts a pause. Yeah. We're going to put it out there and we're going to share it with you. Like, what do you think? What or do you think? Yeah. What are your opinions? What have you heard? At the end of the day, nobody knows what happened. No. You can sit here and say like, I know exactly what happened on this case, this case, and this case. But no. at the end of the day, nobody knows because none of us were there. Yeah. So only, only the victims and the perpetrator. Exactly. So please... We we didn't get a lot of negative comments. Oh no, I, we got most mostly the majority of them love. were very very good comments. Um, Appreciate it all. And a but lot there of them? were <laughs> there were some that were a little disrespectful. And all I want to say is, and like I told this person, you know what, our channel might not be for everybody. No, we are. We both have very different personalities. And we don't pronounce everything correctly all the time. <laughs> there's probably... 90% of the time I don't. There's probably one in, or two in every single episode. Enough that we put blooper reels at the end of, <laughs> of our videos. So 
And that's not to say that like we don't we don't it's not that we're trying to make fun of these cases that we are not. Oh, not at all. It's it's not that. People deal with things differently and sometimes to find humor and tragedy is the way that people work through things. And that's how, you know, I always feel. I want to say that because we do research a lot of murders and crimes and horrible things that have happened to people there. It takes a toll on our psyche. Oh, for sure. It is really, really depressing sometimes. And sometimes I can't even like sometimes even when I'm editing a video, I will come across a picture that maybe I'm not ready to look at ready to see um i have been surprised and shocked by some photos that are out there on the internet um about some of these crime scenes that we report on and we don't take it lightly but when we pass it on we do put a little bit of lightness to it not that the tragedy is lighthearted, but just so that it's just better for our soul like you know it's just our we want the information to be out there. We want people to look into it, especially with this no Cole Kessinger situation. Yeah. There's so much stuff out there that I would love for somebody to reopen, look at it, not put it to the side, not just, oh, we got somebody, we're happy, that just move on. But I just... And people are very passionate about this case, which yes. I a thousand percent understand. Please be passionate. And... and as we are too, like, I definitely think that the family needs justice, but don't come at us because we have no power to do anything. We're just reporting on a case, stating our opinions and that that actual so and i think though we don't even state our opinions i think we just regurgitate facts but here's the thing here's where people got a little hung up in the in the chris watts case which was aired the week before yes the chris watts case um now i have listened to quite a few when the chris watts case first came out like when it first happened i was um listening to podcasts and reading stories on it. And as far as I knew, all I knew about Nicole Kessinger, like I said before, was that she was his mistress. I knew nothing else about her. So as you know, Shannon and I kind of take turns choosing, picking and choosing what cases we want to talk about. So I chose, I wanted to talk about Chris Watts. He had been on my list of cases that I wanted to talk about. So I wrote up the Chris Watts case. We recorded the episode. And in that episode, we kind of talk about Nicole Kessinger and touch on the fact like, is this kind of like an Amber Fry situation? Yeah, we and weren't we, sure. And we bring up the Lacey and Scott Peterson thing, the Amber Fry thing. And a lot of people came at me for that because I said like at some point I felt sorry for Nicole Kessinger. Because at that time, we really at that weren't time, aware. It was not until. It wasn't on our radar. Days later that Shannon called me and said, I think we need to do a follow up episode because I've kind of done some research on this Nicole girl. And I think that there's a lot to be told. It was funny because we did ask that question, like kind of what happened to her? Is she in witness protection and I know that we've had and we're going to read out a couple comments but we did have someone comment like you know the only way you can be in witness protection is if you are you know uh, government protected or Mm -hmm. it has to be an extreme case in which she is not yes we absolutely agree that's why after we read that and we saw some people saying that she might be in witness protection, that's why after we finished recording that episode, I started to do my own research on really what happened to her. Right. Is there anything out there about her? And, and Shannon boy. always likes to on a lot of our cases. Shannon always will say like on a victim or even a perpetrator, like where are they now? Like what yes. she always wants to know where they are now. So she started researching more on Nicole Kessinger so then once I was up to date on some of the stuff that Shannon shared with me and I was watching videos and I was reading more 
then of course my opinion quickly changed. Yeah. Of course. So both of ours. <clears throat> so for the people that are commenting, <laughs> um, and, and I do want to bring this up too, because way back, um, many months ago, we did an episode on Scott and Lacey Peterson. Yes. And I got eaten alive for that episode because I had made a comment. I'm not a hundred percent sure that he did it. I'm not a thousand percent convinced that he did it like beyond a reasonable doubt. So people came at me hard for that. Yeah. But once again, <laughs> did I say, first of all, my opinion has nothing to do the man is in jail it's not because gonna, he's not it, whether i out. think he's guilty or not is not going to have any play on this man's life and and how how anything plays out um excuse my dog he's barking at i don't know what but anyway um and so you know again especially on these shoot the shit episodes and the shoot the shit. The Nicole Kessinger was a shoot the shit episode, it which actually was, which you guys know that is just me and Shannon kind of talking back and forth, having a conversation like we would, if we were just sitting on the couch, eating a bowl of popcorn, talking about something, driving in the car, just kind of sharing our thoughts off the top of our head. So no, we're probably not going to get maybe some dates, right. Or, you know, there's going to be some inconsistencies, that's why they're called shoot the shit episodes. It's just like two friends talking about a case that you heard about and like, hey, have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? We right. do those. And we and actually, we probably should have said it in the beginning of this episode. This is definitely a shoot the shit episode. Well, and we, we want to go talking. over some of our comments. We want to yeah. read some of our comments that we've gotten from um, some listeners on YouTube. And um, because we do, we we love to hear what you guys have to say on all of this stuff and just like you know on Zawaki how he was like oh my god they said some stuff that I had never heard of some of you guys are commenting stuff that we Amazing. haven't heard of either Amazing. so I think the more people talk about this case and more things are thrown out there and I know that there's a lot of theories about this case that like may or may not be true um it's just, just to throw them out there. I love just reading people's take on it yeah. regardless. Absolutely. So I, let me um, start off with one that gave me the idea. I'm going to read one of our listeners comments um, because it gave me the idea to do this episode. I came in mm -hmm. and I said, I think it'll be great if we can read this because this is something I had not heard. And, and I am going to preface this with, we have not sat through all hours of the interrogation videos. Right. We have not, I've only taken snippets or I've watched other YouTube videos or other channels who have covered the videos. I do actually, even before Zawaki, I hope I pronounced yeah, that correctly. Yeah, I think it's Zawaki. Covered our um, episode. I actually was freaking out because I watch his videos and I follow him. I was already subscribed to his channel. And he actually has a video of the car. Like he was reviewing a, another YouTuber's video of the Chris Watts in the car in the neighbor with the video. And, and I'm so sorry because normally we edit our videos and this one's not even going to be edited. So you're going to hear all my bloopers and all my, <laughs> that I edit out of all our videos, but he was actually showing that vi a video of it. And I actually used that clip in our video and yeah. I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, so I was really super excited, but the one that brought to, that came to my attention, we had a listener her name is, I'm going to pull it up right here. Um, and I'm going to not, uh, and if I pr mispronounce it, I'm so sorry, but her user handle name on YouTube, mm -hmm. it's M-I-L-Y, like Lily, but Millie, I would say Millie. M-I-L-Y. And Lily's L-I-L-Y. I would so say I Millie. Millie.61. Millie and she actually commented in Spanish, but I had my husband translate it for me. And she says something, and I hope I got it translated correctly because I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going <laughs> to, another one. My husband's not a translator. Yeah. He's not an interpreter. I'm sure he got the, yeah. the gist, the gist of, of it. Yeah. So it says Chris Watson Kessinger met in 2017 at a gym. 
Then they saw each other at the 4th of July 2017 fireworks, and Chris introduced him to Shanann and her girls. Kessinger then started working at Anadarko. And then she asked, did you listen to the five hours that Chris Watts spoke with FBI agents a few months after being convicted? So I responded, no, thank you so much for that information. No, I did not watch the full five hours of Chris Watts's interrogation or when he spoke with the FBI agents. And so I love this. So this I'm going to take and I'm going to look it up. I'm going to try to find it. I'm going to try to see if I can find transcripts. I'm going to look on the internet. It's another one of my deep dives. I'm interested in this because we do find out that she Googled him in 2017 and we wondered why and how, and you brought this to light. Like this is probably why and how Right. she had a brief interaction with them and then became obsessed. Right. All I can. Yeah. Because we obviously know that there was some, whether how brief or non-brief it was, there was some interaction between the two of them because she was obviously Googling him and her and the family and all of that and was very actively stalking Shanann's um social media accounts yes. so we know we know that um what I do want to bring up is I don't know if I can find I there were there were actually multiple comments about this and oh there's one right there okay this one is from their handle is at love mj2 and this person says shanann was a horrible person i'm surprised this doesn't happen more often I've known women like this who are controlling and abusive, not to the extent of how this woman was with Munchausen and Munchausen by proxy. She put those little girls through hell, torture. Most men would just leave and leave the kids with an ex. I think he knew if he divorced her, the girl's life would get worse. Plus, he found out why she was gone that they were losing their house in a couple of weeks. She spent every cent he made. And told him she was paying the bills. He had no access to the bank account. She wouldn't give him passwords. She was evil. So first of all, what I want to touch on, because we've had a couple, we've had a couple people comment about Shanann having, uh, spending, her spending habits, like she shopped a lot, um, that they didn't, you know, we touched on also in the Chris Watts video, I think about their income and how they were barely able to like make the mortgage and whatever the case may be a little bit financially. Um, But what caught me is the Munchausen and the Munchausen by proxy, because that I am very, very familiar with because I've read numerous stories about people that have suffered from both Munchausen and Munchausen by proxy. So that kind of caught my attention because I don't, I'm not sure where that comes into play. I haven't heard any stories. I heard, I did hear something on a channel and it had nothing to do. They weren't saying anything negative about Shanann, but I did hear that the little, one of the little girls or both little girls did have a lot of medical issues. Okay. But I didn't, it was just like a brief kind of, I heard it and it okay. kind of what came and went. I don't know how true that is. Yeah. I know so, that Shanann did have lupus and I know that she struggled to not only get pregnant, conceive, but to carry a baby. Um, so I don't know if that's where the Munchausen is coming in that she is saying that because Munchausen by proxy is when you harm your children. Yes. For attention. Munchausen's is when you do something to, to yourself. yourself. So they're saying so, it's both. So. so she suffers from both. So are you, I don't know if you're listening to this, but if anybody can clarify this for me, I read it as she's stating that Shanann was maybe faking her lupus diagnosis for attention or something else. Yeah. And maybe the same with her children. And um, I haven't read or heard anything of that nature but yet because i'm sure googled a, it. a lot of you people are probably 
um, familiar with the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case. Yes. We did an episode so on that a few. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think we've done Gypsy Rose. Oh, we haven't? Mm-mm. We didn't talk about her? No, we haven't done a case on her Oh, yet. I'm sorry. But. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't check back then. <laughs> But so that kind of that kind of struck me because I, I, I watched I watched I watched a documentary on it and I just thought it was us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, something is wrong with me. Um, so that I I was just I was really curious. Um, and again, and I replied to her and I just said, still doesn't make it okay for someone to commit murder. So regardless if she has horrible spending habits, if she's evil, I'm not sure. Like evil is like a pretty, pretty strong, yeah. strong word. Um, I don't know how this, this still doesn't make it okay for somebody to murder children. Absolutely not. And murder their spouse murder anybody for that case but absolutely um so that one yeah if you're listening again that was sent to us from at love mj2 and you can always send us direct messages through our instagram Mm -hmm. account at 50 states of madness um if you want to continue the discussion you can reach us at that time and you know just some clarification well i found some interesting and I kind of heard about it, but I did watch, you know, I mentioned in the last video that I got a lot of our information from Behind Criminal Minds, Mm -hmm. and he put out a part two video, and he mentions the inappropriate relationship between Agent Kevin Kobach and Nicole Kessinger, and this is the detective that was on the case that allowed the dad to come in, sit on the interview, who fed her the answers kind of how she should answer some of the interrogation questions he there was also a point in the interview where the dad is asking the detective to stop yeah a certain line of questioning and he does he listens to the father the father has control over the interview process so it kind of blew my mind and we might even put up some videos at another time of some of these portions of this interview where the yeah. dad is literally telling the detective to stop and telling his daughter to stop and saying, you know, I'm, you're crossing the line. You need to knock this off when he should be going about the follow-up questions when she's being been caught in lies. But so what happens and what caught the attention of behind criminal minds was that there's this part in a synopsis on the report that says the attached screenshots represent all text messages between Kessinger and I, meaning Kevin Kobach from August 16, 2018 to September 4th, 2018. So he's talking to her via text and not making like formal. And that's only three days after the murder. Yes. So he's, so here it is right here. So it says, did you see the news? Yes. Think, and you know what? Hold on. Let me get it straight on who's saying what. Okay. So Nicole Kessinger texts him and says, did you see the news? And he says, yes. She says, think that's a real claim, question mark? If so, think you can find him, question mark? There's a TikTok video out there at this time of a guy who's talking about Nicole Kessinger. And this is what their response is to him. And she says, no idea. And uh, no, he says, no idea. And yes, meaning he thinks he can find him. Did he ever mention anything about that? She goes, not at all. I don't know if I believe this yet, but he fooled me into thinking he was much different person than he is. So anything is possible. So, but I do have some dates for things he said that I think are kind of in line with some things that the other man claimed. I already have them on my list to talk to you about. So she's Googling these TikTok videos and what people are saying about her and they're talking back and forth about it. I don't know if that's something like a detective should be doing. Of course. I mean, I would say no. So he actually sends her, okay. And then he sends her, have you seen this? And he sends her another link to something that's about her so this is like is she 
Chris Watts mystery woman. So they're talking about these people that are claiming like they know that this is probably around the same time when they're the public is finding out about the affair. Right. And so she says, yeah, I saw that the people are grasping at straws. That picture is very, very old. That's what she's focusing on after. Yeah. It's what she looks like in a picture. In the picture. Um, And they don't have my last few employers or my correct address or even my last few addresses for that matter. But they're going back and forth having this casual conversation. And so this is the TikToker that she's referring to or a blogger. I don't know. It's maybe it's before TikTok. Who knows? But um, I might be saying the wrong social media. But they're going to back and forth having these casual conversations back and forth like they're buddies. Like he's not supposed to be finding out the truth. Right. About what happened. Mm -hmm. And this is the same detective. And at this time, too, he's. He got a job. So, okay, that, that's going to jump to the next, <laughs> next what they're talking about. But he starts texting with her about what their, uh, his next, he, that he got another job. He's going to no longer be on the case. I wonder why. Like, to me, it's just kind of suspicious. It is very suspicious. Because at this point, we're questioning your tactics and your ability. Yeah to interrogate this witness and how you treated her and how you made her a protected witness before she Mm -hmm. even came in. And now you're no longer going to be on On the case. case. You're no longer with this department. You're actually moving to Florida, I believe it was. So, um, let's see what it says. And then he says, okay, he's talking about that person. He says, okay, we'll address this next time we meet. I think we better bring you in for a recorded interview. Sorry for the inconvenience. A whole family is dead. Is dead. But I'm going to say I'm sorry for the inconvenience that I need to bring you in. I need to talk to you. About a murder Mm -hmm. with a family that you're having an affair with the husband. Like, Mm -hmm. who is admitted to murder like, and honestly when you when i when i watch those videos of her she's so cocky just the way that she talks the way that she answers questions it's like she has like i don't have the time for this right now like i'm just like like she's doing them a favor by sitting there and answering questions and and this is just like she just doesn't have the time for this it's crazy and then so when he says i have so much she goes i have so much i remembered this week anyways and i think we'd be better for everyone you still want to shoot for tuesday i think it'll take a chunk of your day and he says yes tuesday or wednesday these people may these people may require my attention on tuesday i want to know who these people are is he talking to like it's just understood please give me a little notice probably the people that are um posting all the videos probably and stuff about she was i will and then he asked do you know a michael kelly i don't I, that's the first time i heard that name and she says no who is that just wonder if you know the name so he's asking her questions before he brings her in of for course. a recorded interview because yep. what she can do now is go online mm-hmm Find out who this Michael Kelly is. Yep. And she's and got answers already. Be prepared by the time she comes mm-hmm. in. Yeah, she so answers. he is prepping her before a recorded interview. He is sending her websites Basically what he's going to, yeah, what he's going to ask her. Like this is in a roundabout way. This is what we're going to talk about. Click this link yeah. and that'll take you to like the questions I'm going to ask you. And this is how, you know, you need to know who this person is. Here's your homework. Mm-hmm. You know, and do it. And then she goes, I've attempted to reach out to these therapists numerous of time, numerous times, and they either don't respond or they don't have room for clients. I need a new list. I've been trying so hard to help you guys, and I'm struggling on my end because I feel like I'm at a standstill with minimal options. Please help. No, I'm sorry. I can't. I swear I, I never really understood what a narcissist is, like in full Mm-hmm. form like you know you hear see the tiktok videos and they throw out these words and stuff that comes flying at me sometimes yeah. and i don't always understand them 
when I hear her, like her picture comes to mind mm-hmm. now when I hear the name and the t- she's just so all about herself her. mm-hmm. and her feelings and what's happening with me with her. and look at my picture looks so ugly and oh my God, what picture are they using of me out there? Yeah, and, and that's what you're worried about? Me, me, me. And this whole family was killed. And just, um. So while we're on the topic of the, the text messages and stuff like that, um, Somebody had, here we go. Uh, this person is Vanessa Curry, 711. She said, I thought she factory reset her phone. I don't know if they can get messages. If she did that, I'm not sure about the cloud with that. So it sounds like she's saying that she heard that maybe Nicole had done a factory reset on her phone and wasn't I had never heard that before and so I don't know if you do a factory reset on your phone if you're able to get messages okay everybody retrieve them you see I'm googling it right now and it's not for a personal thing okay (laughs) they're gonna be like and when we looked up her (laughs) internet searches right yeah if people looked up factory (laughs) google searches reset my phone factory reset my phone can I mean I just feel like at this point retrieve oh lord <laughs> glad she's doing that on her computer and Deleted not mine mess. I know it's gonna it's gonna be a red flag for the FBI right now along so police can recover deleted messages pictures texts and files from a phone the answer is yes by using special tools they can find data that hasn't been overwritten yet also because on the same topic she actually asked him she asked him this question. Any luck with restoring my phone messages yet? She's probing him for information. Well, and and then, should he should he even be responding to that? Would 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 be good to do all this in one day if possible so I can start trying to focus on healing. Because she's saying, if you guys found any messages, I want to be prepared to answer it because of let's course. just get it done with now. And then, like I said, about the Michael Kelly mm-hmm. in him feeding. And I found that link for the Michael Kelly reference. She looked so it up. So of course like she we did. Said. Of None course of that she stuff did. makes any sense to me. I don't know those people. Hazel is looking into the therapist thing. Whatever. I don't even know. Like, but, um, I mean, I just, I feel like nowadays, like every, there's nothing that's kept a secret. I feel like he fed her everything. Like, I just, I don't know. And he writes, okay, thanks. Sorry, I'm in the mountains with limited service. Your phone may take time to get um, time. And it says THI get five. Working on it. And what does it say? I wonder if I have the next part. Hope Hazel's getting what you need. And then, yeah, so I don't know what he was trying to say. But, um, and then he says, good morning. What time works for you on Tuesday afternoon? She goes, whatever works best for you, Kevin. Oh, I got a new job too out of state starting mid September. We need to discuss logistics going forward after that as well. Oh, so she got the new she, job. So she got a job out of state. Why are you I moving? Thought, okay. Okay. Congrats on the new job. Are you willing to share? Um, not really over a text or recording, but if you guys will provide me with a private place, I'll be more than willing to speak about the new things I'm building in my life. Yes. 1 PM works. Okay, I respect that. And we can talk about it Tuesday, thanks. So she got the new job. So that's mine. She go. oh, she said, okay, congrats on the new job. Are you willing to share details with me of where you're going Tuesday at 1 p.m. at my office in Lakewood if that works? And she said, not really over a text. But (laughs) why? But no, it's just so weird that they're having this conversation. But are you willing to share details with me of where you're going? No, she probably needs to let them know where she's going because she is a witness in a case. I don't know. I'm just blown away. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's, um, so another theory that I heard another. So I thought he was leaving. Why did he get taken off the case then? I'm going to have to look into that. I'm sorry. See, that's what happens when we don't, we're not going to edit this. You guys are going to see all our follies and then in full bloom. And this is, <laughs> this is where she, <laughs> this is where she's going to spend the rest of her night. I, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and I'll look um, for this stuff. So I heard that a lot of people have commented that 
Nicole, I forgot her last name, not Kessinger, but Shanann's friend, Nicole. Yes. Um, kind of when she came to the house that she interfered with the plan or whatever the original plan was. So apparently, I don't know if I'm getting this right. The plan was that they were going to blow up or set the Anadarko on fire. Oh, her and Because, Chris. yes, because apparently when, th- so the girls were put into those tanks. So when their bodies were removed from those tanks, they were afraid to transport them because they would combust. Wow. So if he would have set that place on fire, they would have never, they would have never found those bodies. They would have never found the bodies. And they're saying that that is the reason that they chose to dump them there is because they were going to start a fire. So do you, the bodies never would have been found, but yet, they could have just been missing and never found and they could have they, well they could have stuck to the story <clears throat> where she got up and took the kids right but do you think that's why they chose survey 19 because that location was so out of the way too. exactly exactly it wasn't close there was nothing around it yes because when they transported the little girl's bodies they had to do it um i'm not sure how they did it but i know that it was had to be done in a specific way because they were worried about the bodies because of all the gas. Yeah. Wow. Well, I found a TikTok video through a channel, through a YouTube channel um, called 10 to life. So I want to give them a shout out as oh, well. Oh yeah. Um, so she had, and this was a while ago, but she had posted a TikTok video that was, a while ago regarding how we mentioned Nicole being at the house at the same time that he was removing the bodies or that morning at some point. Right. So when we went through and I, maybe we can put up a video at another time or something regarding it, but I'm going to try to hold it up because normally we attach it, but This right here is a screenshot of the TikTok video and of the video footage that they have outside the home. This one shows someone wearing black boots and it looks like they have boobs and hair. And it's very clear. It's very clear. And the other shot is of, uh, let me see if I can get the, here we go. And if you look at what Chris is wearing, he's wearing a black top, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes. Yeah. And there's another person with them who has a black sweater. Which clearly looks to be a female. Black boots. Yes. And they even have the outline. They circle the outline of it, of how she has a purse around her waist that looks very similar to the purse that Nicole Mm -hmm. has at some of the interviews. So I encourage everybody to go check out either 10 to life or this. um, Let me find the the TikTok person who had this video up. Her name is. That's why I screenshot everything, because I like to give people shout outs. And sometimes I just don't remember. Her name is Alex Eckerson. Erickson? Erickson. Erickson. Alex Erickson. (laughs) So if you want to check out her um, TikTok video too on it, um, she does a lot of um, little TikToks on the Chris Watts case. So if you're interested in deep diving with her as well. And, but they talk about how it's very, that, that picture and that video is, is extremely, extremely clear. I would love to know how legit it is. Yeah. But there's all these videos coming out because even today I saw on the channel and I'm gosh he's gonna kill me because I just I have a really hard time pronouncing people's name Zawoki Zawoki um he has one too that talks about 
uh, Nicole's car being a neighbor seeing Nicole's car. And he actually right. has video footage of that. And I know that we mentioned it, that a neighbor did see. Yeah. And we talk about it, but we actually, I never even actually saw the video footage yeah, that so, the neighbor had. So for, but for people who aren't, out. aren't from his channel, go check, go to his channel because he's done multiple, multiple videos on this case. And he, he has some really good um, videos and pictures and stuff that he... Uh, that he puts up in his videos and it's it's yeah you think I go down a rabbit hole? yeah he's he's right there with us <laughs> he goes right down the rabbit hole but he records his rabbit hole yeah which is great because you can find out a lot of information and just and like we said we're not fact checking checking yeah. we're looking at different videos different people's perspectives check it out if you want to get all the information and then you decipher from there right you take all that information in you look at the police reports you sit and watch the seven hours of, you know, interrogation videos, the five hours with Chris Watts in front of the FBI. Watch it, please. I know I'm going to try to get some of that in too, but do some of the research on your own as well. We're encouraging you. Yeah. Because and continue to comment. And um, there's a couple other things I want to comment yes, on. Yes, please. So um, on that 10 to life, I don't know the... the <laughs> That's what happens when we're live. <laughs> and we're not live, but I don't know uh, the girl's name, but the it, I think her channel was called Ten to Life. Yes, Ten to you, Life. Yes, so Ten to um, Life. She brought up a really good point that about the morning of when Nicole's phone pinged at six sixteen. Um, in the morning. Yes. Near the Watts home. So. On a normal day, they went back and they checked her phone records on a normal, regular day Okay. prior to this. And on a normal day, she would make phone calls, um, outbound and incoming calls, about one to two calls per hour. Would to either Chris. No, no, no. Oh, to, to just random people. Okay. Her phone, she was con So basically, throughout her whole day... She was on her phone. She's actively she's on her phone. She's either receiving phone calls. She's making phone calls. On this morning in particular, her phone pings at 6.16 in the morning. There's no phone activity until 2.26. I'm sorry. Yes, until 2.26. No phone activity between 6.16 a.m. and 2.26 p.m. And that was the only day that her phone pinged in that area on all her other yeah. other days that means she shut her phone down so but that not only pinged. that she's never in that area yeah that was the only day that her phone pinged in that area and we're That's talking like usual even route. in september like after the fact before the fact so her phone does not usually she's not in that area so she received no phone calls during that time which obviously means her phone was probably turned off yes then that afternoon, she calls, she makes two two phone calls at 2.28 p.m. and 2.35 p.m. from her office phone, not from her cell phone, from her office phone. And she calls um, a man whose name is Robert. He's 70, a 73-year-old man, and he's from an organization. Um, and this is where it kind of goes kind of dark, gets kind of dark, but this is... I guess she does some sort of sex magic. She practices oh. some sex magic. And this is her spiritual advisor. That's funny because a lot of people did make comments yes. about how she was into like white magic, black magic, cult, uh, all different yes. comments. And so this is a membership based like on an initiation system. So... So Some, there's something there's to something, that story. Yes. So we've had a lot of people comment that she was involved in the occult, that she was into whatever sex magic is. I don't know. Um, and I, th you can, I'm sure, really go down a rabbit hole if you look into that kind of stuff. Yeah. And there's been a lot of people commenting that Chris was apparent. Chris had apparently said that... Um, during the time that he was with her that like he started to feel different he didn't feel himself so oh and he was like all head over heels too like the 
Ooh, spells? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like... <laughs> I don't want to throw that out there because we're going to get a lot of that. But I'm just saying. No, like, you know, but, but I, I do feel like, you know, the mind is very powerful. And I, I, I feel like I've been in situations where I've known people that this, not where like a murder was committed, but somebody has turned into somebody that I didn't know. And I feel like it was because of an, another person. And so I don't know how much there is to this. I don't know if this plays a role, but I know that a lot of people did comment that is she that, was very much into this. Is that part of, cause I know there was an interview again, this is where she's being interviewed and she actually is the one who tells the officer. So there's an interview where they're asking her about one of her friends. I want to say the name is Jim, but I'm don't quote me mm-hmm. on that. And they're asking her about him and she goes, I just want to leave him out of this. And they're like, but we have to make sure, because she, say, she says she's in a particular place at a particular time, so they want to verify with this person that she's yeah. using as an alibi for this particular time. They want to verify with him. And they're like, well, we need to call him to verify ourselves. We're not going to bother. And this is this is him like, we're not going to bother him. Right. We're just going to, you know, verify and get off the phone really fast. We're just going to ask, and then that's my verification. Look, whatever. lady, three people are dead. You're going to no. be, you're going to ask questions until you need Thank to stop. You. Like, so, but she actually tells him, oh, no, I don't want you to bother him. And then he drops it. The detective actually drops it and never gets that verification there's from so this person. Many, there's so many points that in that person? interview. No, right? Um, no, this guy's person. name is Robert. Okay. I don't. Yeah, yeah no, I no. I Jim. think this guy is just her spiritual advisor. Um, and I think that. I just feel like it's. Not a coincidence. What a convenient time that she's calling that him. she's calling him at two twenty eight and two thirty five from her work phone, not her cell phone. And it says that th- that this it what what's just really catching me is this whole thing about the membership is based on an initiation system. So, what is that? Initiation? What has to happen? Yes. What has to happen? What do you have to do to get into this club? Do they say the name of the club? Or yes, the- but I can't pronounce it. And I'm not even going to try to because I got. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Because so we, here, we, me, we tried it. to, we <laughs> tried to pronounce a last name and people. That's okay. Um, you know what? It's fine. Just do your best. Let me see. We're all about try, try, try here. While you're looking that up, I wanted to touch on another thing that came out and some other videos that are coming up and other things that are being brought to our attention. And like I said, I was a fan of Zuwuki before uh, I even saw him feature our video. He asked Gina, I screamed when she oh, she did. to me. <laughs> she did. <laughs> I was like, scream of excitement. But... He mentioned today, I was watching a video on a letter that Chris Watts wrote in June. And like we said, if you need to go and check it out yourself, but I'm just going to kind of open up that letter and freeze frame it just so I can get a read on it really quick, especially since I can't. She's got me under pressure here because he's got so many, he's got so many videos on this right now. Um, one 37 minutes ago. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm telling you, you need to follow this guy cause he will give you all the answers, not even answers. He'll get you thinking and asking questions and they might not be the answers, but it's, it's a lot of stuff out there and he's bringing it to our attention and it's just so awesome that in, in I hear that the fans are the ones, the people who follow him are the ones that are leading him in these directions in this direction. Cause they, they're ones that are sending him the videos for him to look at and go over. But this one letter that Chris Watts wrote on, Oh, it was August 6th, 2018. 
that says, to whom it may concern, if anyone gets this letter, I would never do anything to hurt myself or my children or my wife. If something happens to me, please investigate my wife, Chris Watts. Why would somebody write that? Why would he write that? And when was this? August 6th? August 6th. So like a week before the murders? How, what what day were the murders again? I Weren't they like somebody... August 12th or August 13th? Yeah. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try to get the right answer for you on that one. Yeah, I think it was. Oh uh, yeah, August thirteenth, I believe. Oh well, Watts was fin. Yeah, I believe around August thirteenth. At one forty, left. Yep, yeah, at one forty p.m. She left. Reports are missing. So the morning of the thirteenth. So. Yeah. So please check him out. Yeah, and we follow could, him, we could like go on him, for, subscribe. We could we go could on, on for days. Um, we could go down. I mean, our whole goal today, we were going to try to read a lot more of the comments, but it's so There's hundreds many. of them. Please read them, look at them, you know. And even if, I mean, even if you don't have time to read them and you don't know, because a lot of people are like, I don't know if somebody already said this. Like, who cares? Just type it anyway and just... Yeah, because we're trying to read all of them. We're trying yeah. to answer all of them. I, we're trying to read all of we've them. We've really been trying to respond to all of you guys, uh, really all of the comments, because we really appreciate it. Um, and again, before we sign off, just please keep it respectful, not only to Shannon and I, but there was a little section where a couple people started to get into it with each other. Um, again, like that's just the one thing that we really... Yeah, we're just here to deliver wanna, the information. Want to push is just yeah. please keep it respectful, and it's okay for people to disagree and have different thoughts on this case. So, um, but yeah, again, we just we really appreciate all of you guys and all of your comments and Zawoki. Shout out to you for You're sure. Awesome. Thank we you appreciate so much. it. Yeah, thank you thank so you much for, for all the, the new listeners, yeah. new subscribers. Um, at this moment in time, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Woo -woo. So maybe, let's see, we are at 983 subscribers right Only now. 17 away. So, so we're almost so there. Hit that like. Thanks hit that to him. Love, hit that subscribe. Thanks yes. to Zawoki. We're there. Big and so, yes. Shout so out. shout out to yeah. him. Shout out to all the new subscribers. We really appreciate you guys. And we hope you enjoy our channel. Um, we do kind of, we did get one comment where we really like, where, where did you hear that comment that about what, where did I hear that comment where they really like the fact that we're all about sharing and, and being happy for each other. Cause for the oh, most yes. part, all of us like who are on podcasts, YouTube, We've had nothing but love from other YouTube channels, other podcast channels. Yes. Uh, we would not be here today if it weren't for a lot of these Reform Radio. We said it in our last one, Reform Radio, Paranormal Peeps, other um, channels that have helped us out, help us set up. When we had trouble, people we reached out to, we had um, The Strangest Fruit. Yeah. We're just supporting us. It's such a great community and we want to keep it that way. We want to keep it positive. We're not about um, trying to be better no. or fighting with other channels or for anything like that. I think there's enough viewers out there for everyone. Yeah. Every I love true crime. I listen to all the time. I can't even tell you how many different podcasts I listen to. Subscribe and even to. it's the same exact story told a different way. I want to listen to it. Yeah. And you can it get it. It doesn't matter. Stuff. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, just, so yeah, we're not, here to argue and and fight with anybody um but yes there was there was a comment that it was just refreshing to see two youtube channels you know getting along without you know people just calling other people out and no so yeah we love so. it so please keep watching we you can find us on instagram at 50 states of madness you can Look find us you. on TikTok at 50 States of Madness, our YouTube channel where you found us. And um, we have our merch. Go ahead, Gina, hit it. That's all I got memorized. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, if you want to grab some of our merch, we are at 50 states of madness. Big cartel.com. And if you would like to join our Patreon, welcome April. Also, we have a new Thank Patreon. You. Thank you, April. Thank you, April. Um, we are at patreon.com slash 50 states of madness. Thank you yeah. so much. So thank you, and we will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.